Hi guys, my name is Disha, and today in this video, we are going to discuss one of the very important part of application development cycle, and that is unit testing. Let's first understand what are unit tests. So unit tests are a subset of automated tests that are used to test small pieces of production code independently. The primary motive behind writing unit test is to ensure that every component works as expected and in order to avoid potential bugs in future. So for this tutorial, we are going to use XE test, which is a framework that is used to write unit test in Xcode projects. In this video, we are not just going to cover the basics of unit testing in iOS, but will also deep dive into the implementation by writing unit test for a sample SwiftUI project. So without any further delay, let's get started. So the first thing that we are going to do here is to set up a new Xcode project and add unit test target to it. So we'll click on this create new project, click on next and here let's give uh, our app a name. So I'll call it unit testing demo. And you have to make sure that you select this include test checkbox so that uh, your project contains the unit test target and click on next. You can create it wherever you want. And once it is created, you would see two additional folders in here. One is unit testing demo test and other one is unit testing demo UI test. So the first one is for writing unit test and the second one is for writing UI test. Since the scope of this particular tutorial is only to write unit test, we'll be writing or we'll be creating all the classes inside this unit testing demo test folder. Now, in case you have an existing project to which you want to add unit test to, what you can do is you can simply go to file, click on new, click on target, and you simply have to search for unit testing bundle, click on next, and here it asks for a product name. So the general convention is to give the product name or the folder name, same as the app name suffix with test. So we'll keep it as is and click on finish. Okay, so the setup is done. Next, we need a SwiftUI project for which we'll be writing tests for. I've already created this sample project over here. It's a basic to do SwiftUI app, uh, which uses MVVM architecture. For the sake of simplicity, we have added only one functionality to this particular to do app, and that is to let user add a task to their to do list. For example, here, if the user enters say go to gym, click on this add task then you can see that that particular task is added. So let me quickly explain you the whole code that I've written over here. Uh, you can get this code from the GitHub repo given in the description. So first of all, we have created three folders. One is model, second is view model and third is view. So in the model, we have created that model for the to do task. So it has two things. One is the ID and second is the name. Why we have given ID because we want to uniquely identify each task with the help of this ID. And that's why we have made it identifiable. The second is a view model. So this view model conforms to the observable object and it has a published property called task, which is an array uh, and each array element is of type to do task. And we have initialized it with three tasks already. Additionally, since we want to separate the logic from the view. So one logic that is required in our app is the add task functionality. So when the user enters the task in the text field, then this add task function would be called in case the user do not enter anything in the text field and click on add task, nothing happens. But if something is written in the text field, then a new to do task is created and that particular one is appended to the task that we have. Then finally, we go to the view. So inside the view, we first create an instance of this to do view model that we have created and we have called it as view model. Also, uh, we have created a state variable for the task that the user is going to enter and initialize it to an empty string. So inside this vstack, we have a list which lists all of the tasks that are there. And here we have also created a text field. And secondly, we have a button which calls this add task function with the new to do task entered by the user. Okay, so this is how our app looks like. Pretty simple, right? Now is the time to write unit test classes where we'll be writing the unit test cases for this particular project. If you are following with me so far and enjoying this video, do hit the subscribe button. It motivates me a lot to make more such content. Now for this particular example, you can see that we only have one class to test and that is this to do view model. 
so accordingly we'll only create one particular class in our unit testing demo test folder but keep in mind that in case you have multiple different component to test then you will have to create that many unit test classes and name them accordingly so there is a uh, one file that is present over here so we will remove this and create one for us from scratch so right click on this and create a new file so you simply have to search for unit test case class template and let's uh, name this particular one so the general convention again here is to name the class same as the class that you are testing and suffix it with test so we are going to test our to do view model class so we have named it this and suffix it with test and click on next make sure that you have selected this unit testing demo test folder and also this target as unit testing demo test and click on create a new template file has been created by xcode if you have a quick glance at this particular file you can see that we have imported xe test at the top there is a class that has got created and it is a subclass of xe test case other than that there are four functions inside it don't get intimidated by all of this that is written over here we'll remove all of it and we'll create from scratch let me quickly explain you what this xe test case is it is nothing but a subclass of xe test and to ensure that xcode consider this class as a unit test class we have to make it as a subclass of xe test case apart from that it also provides two very important override functions which we are going to talk about later now inside this class the first thing that we are going to do is define a variable of type to do view model so let's create a private variable for it and call it sut why sut so it basically stands for system under test and it's again a general convention to name the variable name as sut and uh, we will make it to do view model and i'm also going to make it an implicitly unwrapped optional so that i do not have to initialize it at this particular point because that is what i'm going to do later but we are getting an error over here cannot find type to do view model in scope now you might be thinking that whenever you define a class in your xcode project you are able to freely use it in any other uh, files and folders as well but why are we getting such an error that is because by default in swift all the classes or all the methods that you define in the main app target have internal access control that means you cannot access it directly in your unit test target so for that you will have to make use of the testable import to make the internal declarations available after this import xe test we are going to import this unit testing demo now you can see that the error is gone after this we are going to define two functions two override functions one is set up and the other one is tear down now what are these functions and what do they do since we write multiple unit test cases inside this class we need to make sure that each test run in a virtual clean room and the result or the setup of any of the previously run test case shouldn't impact the current one and that's where the setup and tear down function comes into play this setup method is called before each test case and this is where we initialize our sut first we call the setup function from the super class and then we initialize this sut to to do view model one important thing to note in here is xe test create test instances but it never destroys it so if you want to write good test cases you should make sure that you also write this tear down function which is called after each test case and what it does is it is used to clean up the sut that you have created by setting it to null and also we call the tear down function from the super class which performs any tear down required in the super class as well so it's very important to write these two functions finally it's time to write our test function or test case so just like how we define functions in swift similar to that you can create a test function as well but for a function to be a test function it needs to follow certain basic rules the first one is it should be defined in a class that is a subclass of xe test case so that is fine for us secondly its name should start with test 
Uh, so what I generally follow is I put an underscore and also write the name of the function that I want to test. Since for this particular example, we only want to test one functionality inside our to do view model class and that is add task. So that's why I've written it over here. Now what goes inside this test function? So for structuring a test case, what we generally follow is a AAA approach, which stands for arrange act and assert. This is also popularly called as given when and then. So the arrange section is where we create all the necessary objects or data that the test will use. Secondly, in the add section, we call the method that we want to test. And lastly, in the assert section, we match the result with the expected outcome. So let's start with the arrange section since uh, we want to mimic the user action. So we'll create a new to do task by ourselves and let's call it test task. Also, I want to track the number of uh, elements in the array. So I'll create another variable initial task count, which will hold the number of items that were there in the array initially before adding this particular new task. So this will be equal to sut dot task dot count. Now in the add section, we call our add task method. So I'll again write sut and call my add task function with the new to do task. Lastly, here in the assert section, we need to confirm whether the expected outcome is same as the result or not. So for that, we'll be using assertions provided by the XC test framework. Let's go to its documentation and understand it a bit better. So as you can see here, there are multiple type of a test assertion like Boolean, nil and non-nil, equality and inequality. So what this assertions do is, as the name suggests, for example, nil and non-nil will check uh, whether a value is nil or not. Equality is the one that we are going to use for this particular example as we want to compare whether two values are equal or not. So for this, you simply have to use this XCT assert equal and pass in two values. One is the expected outcome and second is the result. So what we are going to do here is we will call this XCT assert equal and you can see it takes in two expressions. Uh, you can put either the expected outcome first or the result first. That does not make any difference. So I will first write the result and then I will write the expected outcome. So the result should be equal to sut dot task dot count. Now this result should be equal to the expected one. That is initial task count plus one. There is another thing that I want to test and that is whether the last element that is added to the array is same as this test task or not. So I'm going to call this last and access its name and this should be equal to the new to do task which is my expected outcome. Now it's time to run this particular test case. So for running the test case, you have a few different options. If you want to run a single test case, you can click on this diamond icon present over here. If in case you have multiple test cases in your class, then what you can do is you can either click on this icon present in front of this class or you can also click on command U to enter all your test cases at once. This setup function will be called first, then this test underscore task method will be called. And after that, the teardown function will be called. So let's run this and see the results. Your tests are succeeded and you can see a green icon over here now instead of a transparent one, which says that all of your test cases are passed. Let's see what happens if our test case fails. Let's say you make the expected outcome as initial task count as well. Now, in this case, this will definitely fail because you are adding something and your add task functionality is working completely fine. Let's run this. Now let's see the results. So you can see your test has failed. You can see a cross over here and uh, you are also getting a message that XCT assert equal failed. Four is not equal to three because initially we had three elements in our array. And after adding this, we should be having four. So this is how you can run the test cases. Now there would be one question that would be coming to your mind right now. And that is, is this individual test case enough for the add test functionality? Or is there some other test case that we should write? 
So how would we assess how much of our code is being tested? And that is where code coverage comes into play. It is a powerful feature provided by Xcode, which helps us to analyze the coverage of our test. If you go to the report navigator and click on this coverage, you get a detailed coverage report. So it shows you which all files has been tested and how much uh, coverage are you getting. So if you go to a particular file, uh, so if you simply click on this one, this is the one that we want to see. So if you hover on this add task functionality, you can see that on the right, you are seeing two stripes. One is red and other one is green. This green stripe denotes the code is covered by unit test and the red one denotes that we haven't written the unit test case for the scenario when the user do not enter anything in the text field and clicks on the add task button. The code coverage report has given us a very important insight because we need to make sure that in such a case, our app shouldn't crash and also shouldn't add any empty value to our task list. So let's quickly write a test case for this particular one as well. So we'll go to our to do view model test class and here I'll create another function for it. So we will have to start it with test and since again it is the add task functionality now i will put underscore and i will write with empty task okay now inside it again we'll create these three sections it's always a good practice to do it like this so that you do not forget anything the only thing that we want to check is whether the number of element in the array are increasing or not so i just need this particular one and I will call my add task with an empty string. This xct assert equal should give me the outcome as the initial task count. So this will be the expected outcome. And here I want to test the sut dot task dot count. Let's quickly run this and see the result. Woohoo, all the test cases I've passed successfully, you have become a pro at it. Uh, now let's go back. If you hover on this, you can see that everything is turning out to be green. Congratulations, you have successfully tested the add task functionality in your Swift UI app. One key thing to keep in mind is always try to write multiple test cases to ensure that you have covered all the aspects of the component that you are testing and it's not always required that all the test cases that you are writing should pass instead you should make sure that you also write some test cases to test the failing scenarios so that's majorly it about this video in case you have any queries related to the things that we have discussed in the video or any suggestion that you have regarding the type of video that I should make on this channel, please drop your comments in the comment section down below. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos in future. See you in the next one.